Chapter 29, Section 4, Fighting the Cold War in Other Parts of the World. By the mid-1950s, the Cold War had effectively divided the world into three groups of nations. One group, known as the First World, included the developed capitalist countries, also known as the West. The United States, Canada, the nations of Western Europe, and Japan. Another group, the Second World, or the East, consisted of communist countries, the Soviet Union, the nations of Eastern Europe, and China. Poor developing nations in Latin America, Africa, and Asia made up the final group, called the Third World. Many Third World nations had recently gained freedom from colonial rule. The United States and the Soviet Union competed to win their support. Some of the countries aligned themselves with one of the superpowers. Others, such as India, remained independent and non-aligned. United States Information Agency, Influencing Hearts and Minds In the Cold War, nations used words and persuasion as weapons. Both superpowers utilized propaganda to exert influence over their allies and to persuade others to join their side. The United States designed its propaganda to raise fears of communism and highlight the benefits of capitalist democracy. This propaganda took many forms, from books and news articles to film and radio broadcasts. To carry out this war of words, the government created the United States Information Agency, or USIA, in 1953. One of the USIA's main jobs was to beam radio broadcasts into the Soviet bloc. It used three networks to carry out this task, Voice of America, Radio Free Europe, and Radio Liberty. The CIA funded these last two services. Radio Free Europe broadcast to Eastern Europe in Czech, Polish, and other local languages. Radio Liberty broadcast to the Soviet Union and Russian. Many of the staff members of these services had fled Eastern Europe to escape communist rule. The families they left behind often faced harsh treatment from communist governments due to their relatives' ties to the radio networks. Soviet and Eastern European leaders tried to isolate their citizens from Western news and ideas by banning radio programs from the West. They disrupted the broadcast by jamming the signals and filling the airwaves with mechanical shrieks, howls, and other loud noises. Foreign Aid – Supporting Friendly Governments Nations also used foreign aid as a Cold War weapon. Both the United States and the Soviet Union gave money and assistance to other countries to gain new allies. In a message to Congress in 1949, President Truman explained why foreign aid was a crucial part of the Cold War struggle. The grinding poverty and lack of economic opportunity for millions of people in Africa, the Near and Far East, and certain regions of Central and South America constitute one of the greatest challenges of the world today. If the people are frustrated and disappointed, they may turn to false doctrines which hold that the way of progress lies through tyranny. Harry S. Truman, from a speech on June 24, 1949. Some U.S. aid helped the poor by providing funds for agriculture, health care, and other social and economic programs. However, much of it took the form of military assistance to friendly third world governments. Pro-American states such as Turkey, Pakistan, and South Korea received help, while more independent nations often did not. In some countries, such as Nicaragua and Haiti, the United States gave support to anti-communist dictators. These leaders used the aid to tighten their grip on power, often at the expense of their people. Many citizens in these countries bitterly resented the aid, which seemed to contradict the U.S. goal of promoting democracy. At times, the United States withheld aid to punish nations that failed to support its policies. In the 1950s, Egyptian leader Gamal Abdul Nasser began building trade ties with communist nations. In 1956, Egypt bought tanks and other weapons from communist Czechoslovakia, in defiance of U.S. wishes. In response, the United States and Britain withdrew their offers to help Egypt finance the building of the much-needed Aswan Dam on the Nile River. Nasser reacted by seizing control of the Suez Canal from Britain. This led Britain, France, and Israel to invade Egypt, hoping to regain control of the canal. The Soviet Union then threatened to back up Egypt with military force. To prevent war, the United States stepped in, persuading all sides to withdraw, and thus ending the crisis. The CIA, containing communism through covert action. In the 1950s, the CIA played a growing part in the Cold War. During this period, it expanded its role from intelligence gathering to covert action. A covert action is a secret political, economic, or military operation that supports foreign policy. 
Agents try to shape events or influence affairs in foreign countries while hiding their role in those events. During the Cold War, both superpowers used spies, satellite photography, wiretapping, and other covert methods to gather information about or influence events in other countries. Francis Gary Powers' U-2 flight was a covert CIA operation. At times, CIA agents also bribed foreign leaders, supporting political parties, or funded supposedly independent radio stations. The United States often used covert action to overthrow unfriendly or leftist governments. For example, in 1953 it helped topple Mohammad Mossadegh, Iran's premier. Mossadegh had nationalized a British oil company, establishing government control over the formerly private company. He also hinted that he might seek Soviet aid. CIA agents worked with Iran's military leaders to overthrow Mossadegh and reinstate the Iranian monarch, Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi. As absolute ruler with close ties to the United States, the Shah ruled Iran for almost 30 years. In Central America, the United States also relied on covert action to achieve its goals. In 1954 in Guatemala, for example, CIA agents helped overthrow the elected president, Jacobo Arbenz Guzman. Both U.S. economic interests and Cold War concerns motivated this action. The United Fruit Company, a U.S. firm with operations in Guatemala, opposed certain social reforms laid out by the Guatemalan government. In particular, United Fruit objected to a government plan to hand over thousands of acres of company land to the country's landless peasants. Concerned that Guatemala might turn communist, the United States ordered the CIA to support a military coup. Arbenz was overthrown, and a military government took charge. It returned United Fruit lands, shelved other reforms, and jailed many of its critics. The U.S. role in Guatemala caused many Latin Americans to view the United States as an enemy of social reforms. Sometimes, the United States intervened more aggressively. In 1962, voters in the Dominican Republic elected a non-communist reformer, Juan Bosch, as president. Seven months after he had taken office, a military coup toppled Bosch. In 1965, his supporters started a civil war to return him to power. Fearing that many of his supporters were communists, the United States sent troops to crush the revolt and keep Bosch from regaining power. 